Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Thursday, the 23rd day of February 2023. You believe that's almost, seems like the year is flying by. We're already in the middle of the first quarter. I hope you're safe and healthy today and your family is also safe and healthy. And that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who every day are saving lives. And those also that do the humble work of picking up garbage for us to keep streets, sidewalks, parks, neighborhoods clean. And those also that make deliveries for our convenience of important things that we often take for granted. Double blessing on the many women that are out here doing the heroic work of helping to rescue, recover, deliver teenagers and children who are unfortunately the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims also of pornography and child pornography, prostitution and child prostitution, human trafficking and sex slavery, double curses on the perpetrators of these things, double curses on the profiteers of these things, double curses on the perverts who together combine to conspire to make and create this disgusting industry. Finally, blessings on those that are homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and children in the United States, mostly children, and millions around the world, similar or worse conditions, blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. Well, Knicks basketball returns tomorrow night. Uh, the Knicks are in Washington, starting really a really rough schedule, but it's all right because we just had a week off. So you got Washington, then the next night, it's a back-to-back so you start off with Washington, and then the next night, um, the Knicks play again, and then they play again on Monday. Um, yeah, they got the Wizards. Who they got after that? And, it, you know, it starts off right off the bat. Maybe that's good, though, because, you know, get us right into it. It's the Wizards, then the Pelicans visit the Garden. Zion Williams in there, although Zion <coughs> is hurt again. Um, but... Dyson Daniels is out. Larry Nance Jr. is day-to-day. Zion is out. Suffered setbacks in his rehab. Um, E.J. Liddell, the rookie, is out. And he signed a two-way contract. But they still, you know, they got Brandon Ingram. They got, you know, they got a nice squad. They got Brandon Ingram. They got um, C.J. McCollum. They got Trey Murphy the third guy that we like a lot coming out of the draft. I really wanted him above Grimes even. Um, Herbert Jones, defensive stalwart. They got Valanchunas in the middle. Um, they really got a nice team, man. Uh, and, of course, Jose Alvarado, who has been a revelation for them. Uh, Josh Richardson. They got a nice squad. Jackson Hayes. Uh, so, it's not going to be easy. So, they got a nice team. And so, um, that's the second night. Then they got the Celtics on Monday. So it's getting right into it. I look at it as an opportunity. The Knicks are rested. Let's get right back into it. Um, let's just grind, okay? That's what we got to do these last 22 games, grind. They've been grinding all year. But <clears throat> now it's the stretch run. So with that in mind, I wanted to talk about the Eastern Conference and the Knicks positioning in Eastern Conference. It's exciting times for us in New York because... It's pretty much a lot. Our Knicks are going to be in the playoffs. The question is, what seed? Are we going to be in the 7th seed, 6th seed, 5th seed, or possibly even the 4th seed is all possible? Anything can happen. Um, but what I'm looking at is, is uh, the consistency of all the teams. The top four, Boston, Milwaukee, Philly, Cleveland, are pretty much set. Like, Cleveland could slip out of there, and so could Philly. I don't think Milwaukee or Boston are going to slip out, but it could Cleveland or Philly is vulnerable to slip down. Then you got Brooklyn and the Nets. And Brooklyn is a big question mark with both Irving and Durant now and other teams. Brooklyn has a solid team. But are they solid enough to keep the fifth seed in the East? That remains to be seen. Um, I don't think so. But that remains to be seen. Anything is possible. Jock Vaughn is a great coach. They're in a similar situation to where Atlanta was a couple of years ago. Uh, in fact, two years ago. When they fired their coach and brought in Nate McMillan, who they just fired, and I think that was a big mistake, but um, they just they brought in Nate McMillan, and then he brought in the defensive culture, and they went on a run. 
It could happen in Brooklyn too. Sometimes that happens with a coaching change. Sometimes a coaching change is good. Sometimes a coaching change is bad. Sometimes a coaching change has nothing to do with really the coach. It's just he's the only one to blame. And, and teams do that. Um, instead of trading Trey Trey Young, they fired Nick McMillan. Okay. Um, okay. Well, anyway, that's their problem. So with the East, okay, it's very interesting because. Every team has that team that they that they play that the records don't matter because they just they're gonna get into it regardless. Like with the Knicks, there's two teams like that. Well really three. There's Chicago, Indiana, and Boston. I mean, we used to be Miami, but that was over the whole the way Pat Riley left thing, and that's all that's been played out, that's done. So it's not as much a rivalry in Miami as it used to be. And then Atlanta's in turmoil now, so that's no problem. But really, Toronto, Chicago, and Boston. Um, Chicago especially. We just have this thing, you know, since Jordan. And even before Jordan, with Don Van Lee and Jerry Sloan back then, Bob Love. I mean, Artis Gilmore. It was always a battle against Chicago. Going all the way back with the Knicks. And still is. Um, and then, of course, there's a subgroup of Indiana. Indiana, of course, with the Reggie Miller years, we've always had a battle with the Pacers. And Toronto seems to have our number. I mean, they always like that, right? But this is the thing. The Knicks, honestly, are like kryptonite to the Celtics. Here's the Celtics. Okay, 73 in the last 10. They've already won 42 games. They are half game above Milwaukee in the East. And I'm telling you, if the Knicks were to play a seven-game series against Boston, I, I like our chances. And the reason is, is not because the Knicks are better than Boston. Listen, the Knicks kind of like, is their kryptonite. It is what it is. Boston will beat everybody else. Okay, they went to the finals before. And they will beat everybody else. But when it comes to Knicks, for some reason, it's 50-50. Okay, it's 50-50. So, um, that's the weird thing about this Standing so of the top teams, really the team that has the Knicks number is Milwaukee. Milwaukee matches up well with the Knicks. Um, Robin Lopez, I'm sorry, Robin Lopez, Brooks Lopez is the key here. He always has been a good offensive player coming out of Stanford. And him and his brother, Brook was the offensive dude, Robin was the former Nick, once a Nick, always a Nick, was the defensive dude. And that's always, that's how it's been. And forever, this guy was on the Nets. He was drafted by the Nets. He was on the Nets forever. Then he went out to the Lakers, and then he came to Milwaukee. But he's always been known as an offensive player. Always a stretch five type of guy was Robin Lopez. Um, but this year, dude is in the top five mentioned for defensive player of the year. That's a major difference. Okay, so you got him. Um, and he causes problems. Because his offense, we know, and he plays defense now. He's not a weak leak on defense. Matter of fact, like I said, he's one of the best defensive center in the NBA. Then you got a guy that is seriously, you know, considered one of the best, probably the best player on planet Earth in Giannis Antetokounmpo, okay? Who has been not only MVP, but defensive player of the year, and for good reason. He plays both sides of the ball on the, you know, the highest, highest level. Then, of course, you got the other pieces that know how to execute. And, of course, being champions already, they know how to win. And Jeru Holiday, Chris Middleton, and then, of course, you got uh, the other pieces. They still, I didn't know why people was talking about them trading Grayson Allen. Um, I just didn't understand it. He's a starter. He's a shooter. Mm -mm. But they got him. They got Bobby Portis, a really good bench piece coming at the fourth spot. Joe Ingles, they got a defensive stopper out of the same spot that Deuce came out of, out of Western Virginia, West Virginia, and Javon Carter. They got Pat Connington. They got a team, okay? And we just don't match up well with it. It's as simple as that, okay? Um, not only that, KP hurt himself against Milwaukee. You know, hurt his knee against Milwaukee. Uh, Mitch Robb <laughs> broke his hand against Milwaukee. We have had Patrick Ewing broke his wrist. Against Milwaukee. It's just like that. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why. But it's just like that. So, um, you know, they say it's like that. And that's the way it is. I mean, I, you know, is what it is. You know, so 
um, I don't want to be. I don't want to have to be dealing with them. But even against them, the Knicks can fight it out. It ain't like they're gonna steamroll the Knicks. Okay, somebody might get hurt off of it, but that's how it is. Like I said, Ewing broke his wrist against. That was pretty much the end of his career. Ewing broke his wrist against the Bucks. Mitch Rob broke his hand against the Bucks. That was against Brick Lopez. Mitch Rob broke his foot. KP uh, broke it. You know, did his ACL against the Bucks. Don't like Milwaukee, but we don't mind Boston. See, now anybody else than this could be. They could be Philly, and they could be Brooklyn, and they could be Cleveland, and they could be Miami. Anybody else. Then I, I, I more than like our chances in the seven game series against any of the other teams, but those two present problems for different reasons. But like I said, I like Boston because you know we seem to be kryptonite against Boston, but Milwaukee's a difficult situation. So let's say right now the Knicks are in the sixth seed. So let's say the playoffs were to start today. If the playoffs started today, well, Boston would play Atlanta, Milwaukee would play Miami, the Knicks would play Philly. I like our chances. I like our chances. And this is the problem. See, like, for, not for the Knicks, though. Philly's under a lot of pressure. They cannot lose in the first round. Not this year. They lose in the first round with Harden and MB. There's going to be changes made. Okay? Definitely. And a lot of people already in the Knicks are counting on the days if they do lose in the first round that MB to be a Knicks. All right, that's fifty fifty. We can deal with that as we get to it. Yes, oh, Embiid is a superstar, but for fifty million, ah, dang, that's a that's a big nut. And the problem I have with it is that if you're going to trade away, you're going to have to trade some pieces now to get him. I'm wondering if he gets hurt, you know, um, for more than thirty games a season, is how much is that going to hurt us? But that's a different scenario. He is a superstar, so there's no doubt we would have to be in that running, but. That's the pressure they're under. They must win. They must get out in the first round. In fact, the Bucs are in championship window mode. If they don't get to the finals, it's a failure. Okay, that's how much pressure they're under. Okay, if they don't get to the finals, it's a failure. Period. End of story. See, the Knicks are not in that position. That's what I keep telling you. The championship window not open for the Knicks yet. Not, there's no expectation of the final. Can they get there? Anything's possible, right? But it's no expectation. If they, if the Knicks really win their first round series and fight hard in the second round, go six games, maybe that's a that's a tremendous success for this series in year three to rebuild. But for for the Philly, if they don't get to the finals, they fail. There's a couple teams like that. In fact, the first three, Boston's like that. Boston haven't been to the finals. If they don't get to the finals, they fail. If Milwaukee doesn't get to the finals, they fail. Okay, Brooklyn. Cleveland, Cleveland's up and coming during that next step. So they can, you know, you wouldn't be surprised if they got to the finals. If they didn't, it would be a complete failure. They just come back and regroup with young dudes. They got like Evan Mobley, Isaac Okoro, Darius Garland, and of course, you know, Donovan Mitchell. They just come back, regroup, and go on from there, right? But in Brooklyn, nobody's expecting anything of Brooklyn. So if they go anything past the first round, everybody's surprised because they don't have Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. But if Boston, Milwaukee, and Philly, lose in the first round, there's going to be problems in those cities. There's going to be problems in those cities, okay? Because they're going to be blamed. You know, y'all know, hey, listen, it doesn't get any hotter than New York, but y'all know, blame, fire the coach, fire this, blah, 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 blah. It, it's people going to be tripping. Especially in them cities, you're talking about, well, Milwaukee's like a podunk city, but you're talking about Boston and Philly? It's going to be on, see? So, right now, the Knicks play Philly, and I like our chances. I love our chances against Philly, honestly. Especially with Mitch Rob back, I like our chances against Philly, okay? But if the Knicks were to get to the fifth seed right now, they play Cleveland. I love our chances against Cleveland. Cleveland ain't no pushover. I ain't saying these people are scrubs now. This ain't going to be no walking apart. But the Knicks could not only play with them, the Knicks could beat them, okay? The teams I don't want to deal with is Milwaukee. That's the team I don't want to deal with because, like I said, for the reasons I stated, I'd rather not deal with them. I'd rather avoid them if I can, Okay? Everybody else we could play with. And even Milwaukee, you know, nobody gets hurt. We could play with them too. But, you know, they just match up well against us, champ, former champions. You know, execute on the highest level in the NBA. Play defense on the highest level in the NBA. I mean, 
Yeah, they'd be tough to beat. They would be. I ain't going to front on y'all. But there ain't nobody else in the top six that I fear. Nobody. Okay? The Knicks can play with anybody. Okay? Boston, well, you would think Boston would be that next team we fear. But like I said, there's a there's an asterisk next to Boston because Knicks, Boston, throw out the records. Throw out the records against Knicks, Boston. We that kryptonite. Okay? Now, the team's coming up from the back. You still got Miami. I still think now that Toronto's got Potal, I'm expecting Toronto to make a run. Um, yep, I'm expecting Atlanta to drop. Well, you know, the firing Nick McMillan is, is not going to. See, I understand why they did it because they can't trade. They couldn't. They didn't want to trade Trey Young. That was what it come down to. But the problem is Trey Young. That's the problem, man. So you didn't handle the problem. You really got rid of one of the solutions. Nick McMillan is the solution to the problem. So they got rid of the solution, and they got to go bring in another solution. And that's not going to be easy. You, you, anyway, that's their problem, but I expect them to sink. So um, Toronto, I'm expecting to rise. I'm expecting Orlando to, to make a move, but they're not really ready yet to make a serious playoff run. They have a chance, though, to, to fight for that 10th seed. I wouldn't be surprised because I, they're young, but they're very talented Pablo Banchero is the real deal. Um, they got back Jonathan Isaac. Uh, they now have Markel Fultz healthy. Anything can happen with them. So I am looking for Atlanta, uh, Orlando to make a run at the 10th seed. I'm looking for Toronto to make a run into the playoffs. They they really, they got, they play 59 games. They got 23 games left. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they went on a winning streak because they they really was just missing a five. I've been saying that all along. They got a squad. They just needed a five. Okay, they traded away Polo, sent them to San Antonio to get trained by Pop, and then bring Broder back. And um, that's they're going to be good. Ken Burks, who they were starting at the five, has either been hurt or his real position is back up five. Okay, he's not a star, so they've been playing without him a lot. But with Polo. They're going to be tough. So they're coming. Washington also, because Washington got Bill back. Okay. So now you got KP, you got KP and Kuzma, especially Kuzma, but Kuzma's playing for his next contract. So he's going to be balling. Okay. And then Bill. Okay. They really do need a point guard. Monty Morris is a, is a good point guard, but he's not a man. But anyway, that's another story. So Washington might also make a run. So you got Toronto and Washington that are really threats coming up from the rear to me for the Knicks. Um, Indiana, they possible, but there's something wrong there. I just don't know what it is. I, I don't get it. I thought they were really much better than they are. Um, I don't know what the problem with Indiana is. Um, they got a, If you look at their roster, they got, they got a nice team, man. I mean, Halliburton is an all-star, right? You got Halliburton is an all-star. Nemhar is a revelation. The best, one of the best three point shooters in the game is Buddy Hell. Nee Smith is another tremendous three point shooter. Miles Turner, who some of y'all were some salivating over, and then they then they got Duarte, McConnell, Benedict Matthews. They got a nice team. I don't know why they. I really don't know why what the problem is with them. But I, I, if they haven't performed to now, I don't expect them to going forward. So really, like I said, the Knicks threats from the rear. Aside from Miami, it's Washington and Toronto for different reasons. So it's going to be a dogfight. These last 22 games, it's a tense, a tense, intense, short space of games. And it's going to be playoff atmospheres every night. And I'm very confident in our team. To, uh, and, and I'm seriously confident because of the squad we got. And then the addition of Josh Hart to Mob Deep. And then even if something happens, we still got Deuce backing that up. I'm not worried about the Knicks at all right now. We are in very good shape. Year three of the rebuild. Here we are talking about fifth, sixth, seven, fifth, sixth, fourth seed in Tom Thibodeau's third year. This is pretty daggone good. So uh like to wrap it up, like I said, uh if we have to play Boston, I like our chances a lot. If we have to play Milwaukee, I don't like our chances. If we play Philly or Cleveland, it's gonna be a dog fight. But I like our chances a lot. And of course, I love our chances against Brooklyn. Okay? I like our chances against Brooklyn. To me, right now, I mean, just being fair. I'm not saying Jock Vaughn's a bad coach. He's an excellent coach. I'm not saying they got a bad team. They got an excellent team, even with all the trades. But the Knicks simply are the better team right now. And, and part of the reason for that, for those of you always looking to make trades, 
the freedom to live for that is because they got more continuity. Okay, they got more continuity. The team that that, that, that plays the starting five, you know, Quinn Grimes is in his second year, and, and Brunson is in his first year with the Knicks. But Brunson is an exception because he's he's the general out there, right? But the rest of them three dudes been playing together for three, four years. Quickly's been in. This is Quickly's third year. This is Obi's third year. These guys know each other. Okay, they know each other very well. So there's a lot of con more continuity with the Knicks than there are with the Nets. And so I'm not worried about the Nets at all. I'm not can't take them for granted, but I'm more than like our chance against Brooklyn. Then of course the city, Brooklyn, New York. Now Brooklyn, I think would get actually more. Fans now that Kyrie and Durant left because they root for that underdog, right? But New York is still the Knicks city. It is what it is. So um, I like the Knicks more than like the Knicks' chance against Brooklyn. And they do. I think we do have to play Brooklyn. Uh, let me take a look at the schedule here. I think the Knicks do have to play Brooklyn a couple times. Schedule is very interesting, man. The Knicks got a pretty tough schedule, um, but there's other teams that have harder schedules than us. We, you know, we're gonna be all right. But then, do the Knicks play Brooklyn again? Let me just take a look here. No, actually, I don't see them on the schedule. So we don't have to deal. Oh, we got March 1st. Next week. Yep, we got we got Brooklyn at the Garden next week. <clears throat> and that's the last time we see them. We got Boston on Monday. That's going to be an important game for both teams. We got Boston twice. We got Boston again the following Sunday. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be something, y'all. So... Uh, it's going to be a dog fight. We got Miami a couple of times, Boston a couple of times. Um, we play the West a lot, you know, coming into the playoffs. We got Washington a couple of times, Indiana a couple of times. It's going to be a dog fight coming down the stretch here. It really is. Uh, starting from the first night against Washington. So, the Knicks are in a really good position. Like I said, um, we have a chance to get the fifth seed. Um, we could also slide down to the seventh. Anything can happen. I'm expecting now, I, I always said minimum 45 wins. I'm pretty sure that's a lock right now. With 22 games left, they're going to go 10, 12 and 10 at least. I'm expecting them really to go 14 and 8 down the stretch. If they can go 14 and 8 down the stretch, they finish with 47 wins. That should be enough to get them to fifth seed this year. You know, that should be enough to get them in the fifth seed this year. So, because <clears throat> it's real, again, it's a dog fight in the East. So, I'm thinking... You know, we're, we're in good shape to try to get that fifth seed if they go 14 and 8, which I'm very confident they can. In the West, there's a lot of good teams. You know, Memphis, Denver, Sacramento, Clippers, Phoenix. There's a lot of good teams in the West. <clears throat> now, I ain't worried about the West right now. We'll deal with the West if we get to the final. Uh, we ain't got to worry about that. We just got to win the games here, these 22 games down the stretch. <clears throat> so, yeah, we're in good shape. Nobody in the East scares me except Milwaukee, honestly. Um, we could play with anybody. I'm expecting the Knicks to win in the first round. If they play Cleveland in the first round, okay. If they play Philly, okay. We could do that. Let's do it. Okay. That's what I'm thinking about it. So let's, let's get this done. It's going to be a dog fight, baby. Oh, we all in. We're ready to go. The only team I don't want to meet in the first round. <laughs> is Milwaukee. And the only way we would play Milwaukee is in the first round is if we're either in the 8th or the 7th seed. So we want to avoid that altogether because uh, <clears throat> Milwaukee's going to be top 2 in the East unless somebody gets hurt, which hopefully they don't. But they, they've 12-0 and 0, and they've they, they won 12 straight. <laughs> okay? They're really rolling. So um, they're going to be 1 or 2 in the East, no doubt. And so with that, but then again, they have a problem with Boston. Isn't that interesting? Boston has a problem with us. Milwaukee has a problem with Boston. And we have a problem with Milwaukee. It's weird how that works, but it is what it is. So, um, we're going to see how this shakes out. But I, I think we wouldn't face the Bucks until the second round, you know, at the earliest, if we can beat our first round opponent. Just think of it like this. The Knicks win the first round, right? Then they're in the second round. If you win the second round, okay, if you win in the second round, you're in the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm not including the play in. I'm saying the regular playoffs. So you win in the first round, there's eight teams in the regular playoffs. You win in the first round, you're in the final four. You win in the second round, you're in the final two. If the Knicks were to win a second round series in the 
I don't know what I'm talking about. Man, let's just get to the first round and let's get to the fifth seed. Right now, we're in the sixth. Let's battle for that fifth seed. See what we can do. All right. Y'all enjoy your Thursday. Be safe out there. Shalom.